This is the Day of Battle podcast. My name is Joe Hayes. This is a rough world. You live a rough life. You've gone through rough things. You've endured things that most people can't even comprehend. They look at you and they wonder how you've done it. How you continue to keep going all these years. You're an admirable person. You're respected. But deep down inside, you see what they don't see. You feel what they can't imagine that you feel. There is emptiness. There's loneliness. There's brokenness. There's grief. There's heartache. There's pain. There's sorrow. There's stress. There's anxiety. There's fear. And if you're going to sit there and tell me that that's not you and you've been through all these things, well, I don't know. But I know me. And I know the persona that I have put on in the past in my life. And I know the public perception of me. And I know myself. And that if you add them all up, it doesn't make sense. You know, when it comes down to it, you can't walk through fire and not come out on the other side smelling like smoke or not having some hair singed. It's going to affect you. It's going to take its toll. And what is the answer? The world has a million different answers for you. And amazingly, none of them ever seem to fix the problem. That's how great businesses are built by repetitious service. So what is the answer? Is the answer just to try harder? To be better? To suck it up? To push through? I think that the easiest thing that you can do in this world is to try as hard as you can. Because that's the knee-jerk reaction that we all have bred into us. This warrior class of men We just try harder. We just endure. We just suck it up. Push through it. Quit whining. Is that really the answer, though? It's not. And I'm going to tell you what the answer is. There is a verse in Scripture that I am going to continually push in this podcast because it's one that has affected my life, and I believe that God will use it in your life. And that verse is Isaiah fifty two twelve, which says this, For you shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. What is the background of this verse? Well, here it is situated in the latter part of Isaiah, and The prophet Isaiah was writing this prophecy to the Israelite people as they were in a state of wickedness, and they were soon to be taken into captivity by the Babylonian Empire. And they would spend 70 years being in Babylonian captivity. When they were initially taken over by the Babylonians, it was a horrific and brutal campaign waged against them. The men of Israel were captured, women raped. It was a horrible situation, and they were led off across the desert into what is modern-day Iraq, where they would spend 70 years. But Isaiah gave them the good news with his prophecy. As he was telling them about they need to change their lives, they need to turn to God, He told them what the end result would be, that they would eventually give their lives back over to God, and they would quit being like everybody else. They would quit doing everything else the world's way, because the Israelites were called to serve God and to be set apart. And you're called to be set apart and to serve God. So Isaiah tells them in this prophecy 
that eventually they will depart the Babylonian Empire and captivity. That they will return back to their homeland, to Jerusalem. That they will rebuild the walls and the city. And that they will again inhabit the city given to them by God. And he tells them, he says, that you won't go out with haste, nor go by flight. He's saying, you're not going to have to run out of there. You're not going to be running for your lives as you flee and escape from Iraq back to Israel. That's not how it's going to be. He says, because the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. So he is before you, and he is after you. And I like to think about that. As a former Marine, I just put myself back in Ramadi in Iraq in the beautiful spring and summer of 2004 when I was on patrol and moving through dirty areas of the city, patrolled by who knows what, the beginnings of ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and it was a dangerous place to be. And I constantly had that eerie feeling in my gut like I was being watched, like anything could happen at any moment. Walking by piles of trash and almost flinching as I, was wa- as I would walk by because I was anticipating an explosion. We never knew what was going to come at us, and we found a lot of violence. But I had trust with my teammates and my squad members And wherever I found myself in that patrol, whether the second or third or fourth person back in that column, I knew that I had to trust my point man to lead me down the right path. I had to trust that he was going to be observant, that his eyes were keen, that he he went through and understood all the training that I had given him or someone else had given him and that he was going to be responsible and that he was going to be prudent and that if he saw anything that looked out of place that he'd raise his hand and give a signal for us to to take cover and take whatever action we needed to do and as i trusted that point man i also had to have that trust with my rear security to know that i don't have to watch our back because someone else is he's got it And that is how I operated when I was over there. I trusted my point and I trusted the rear. And I think that all of us understand that. That is is what you have been given. You have trained with them. You've operated with them. And you trust each other. And you've built that trust over a lot of sweat and sometimes tears and sometimes blood. And a lot of bullets. But you've built that trust. And you've been through it together. Those experiences bring this verse to life for me. But we all know that with those experiences over there, everything didn't work out all right, did it? It didn't happen perfectly. Bad things actually did happen to us. We lost men. Unfortunately, You don't get to see everything coming your way. And sometimes things slip by people, no matter how good of a job they have set out to do. Because it's war. And war is hell. But here, in this passage, you have a promise. Because this is the word of God. And it was written to those people. And it's also applicable in our lives today. And this verse is a promise to us because we serve the same God. And it is the same God who loves us, who wants us to draw close to him. And you could be going through incredible things in your life right now. And things could be crashing down all around you. I know some people that have experienced incredible loss. And I have known them over the years. 
And there have been many things lately that just seem to be crumbling around them. And I'm talking about losing people close to them, whether it is spouses, siblings, children, or dealing with with horrible pains, illnesses, some are worse than others. But when you're going through it, and it's you that the pressure is put on, it's quite a heavy load, isn't it? And it's all you can do to just try to tread water sometimes. And you feel like everything's caving in around you. And there's nothing for you to grasp at. And maybe you've lost your job. Maybe you're dealing with a horrible illness. Maybe you've lost someone close to you recently. And it hurts. And you're scared. And you don't know what's going to happen. And you can't see that clear path out in front of you. I know what it feels like. Because I felt it. And you're not alone. You are not by yourself. And maybe you think that it's too much for other people to even hear about. Like they wouldn't want to know because it's not their business. Well, I can tell you this. That there is someone there. That does know all about it. And that person knows what it all feels like. Because he's gone through it. And he cares about you more than any of your friends do. More than any of your family does. And you can call your friends at four in the morning and they might answer their phone. They might. And they might not. But you can call on this other one day or night, seven days a week, 365. And he will always answer. He will always pick up. Because he is always there. And he actually wants to get the call. And that person is Jesus. He wants to go before you. He wants to go after you. He wants to be in that patrol with you. The driver's seat. He doesn't want to be the passenger. He's the driver. He wants control of your life. It's not anything where you lose by giving up control to him. The more control that he has of you, the more that you win. Because your victory is in Christ. We live in tough times. We have to deal with tough things. And there is a God who loves you and wants the absolute best for your life. And maybe a lot of these things have been sprinkled about your life to put you in a tough spot. Because he wants you to cry out to him. And it's not done in a tyrannical way or an oppressive way. But God does use our trials to draw us closer to him. And maybe that's what he's done with you. Because I know that he's done that with me before. And it looked like it was nothing but a horrible outcome in front of me. But it was actually a blessing. When I got to the other side of it, I said, God, thank you for allowing that thing in my life. And I know that there's a lot of things that you may find it very hard to say that to. And I'm not telling you to say that. Because some things are just awful. And no one's ever going to thank God for a death in the family that they experienced. And that's not what we're supposed to do. But we do see his plan in things sometimes, not every time. That's the truth about it. We don't get to know everything, but he does promise to be with us. You know, as I think about this verse, I'm reminded about another situation in the Bible, and I'm sure you're familiar with it. When Jesus and, and his disciples are out in the boat, they're out on the Sea of Galilee, and... The boat is rocking back and forth and the waves are going and the wind is blowing. And Jesus' disciples, most of them were pretty experienced fishermen. You know, they'd been in some tough spots before out on the sea. And they've obviously handled themselves well in the past because they're all alive at that point in time. But this time there's something different. Jesus is asleep and they are really freaked out. 
and they don't know what to do. And so as this horrible storm is ongoing and raging all around them, they finally decide to wake Jesus up because he was asleep in the stern of the ship. And they wake him up and they ask him, Teacher, don't you care that we're all about to die? And I find ourselves wondering that of God sometimes. After they ask this question, Jesus stands up and he says to the sea, Peace, be still. And immediately, everything is calmed. And then Jesus questions their faith. Because right there he is, in the stern of the ship. And they're in this storm, and they're all freaked out. And they're asking him, Don't you care if we're about to die? And the truth of the matter is this, that just as Jesus Christ was in the boat with them, He is also in the boat with you because he's promised to never leave you and never forsake you. And he's promised you that you shall not have to go out in flight or haste because the God of Israel goes before you and he is your rear guard. He is the same. He's got you. Do you put your trust in him? Is he big enough to handle your problems? Is he sovereign over the situations of your life? Does he know you? Does he care about you? You know the answers to those things. You know that he does. Is he aware of when you can't go to sleep at night and crazy thoughts are running through your head? Is he aware? You know he is. Because he's right there with you. How long did it take the disciples to ask Jesus, Can you wake up? How long did they wait? You know what I bet they were doing? I bet that they were furiously trying to row themselves to shore. Probably for a while, while Jesus was sleeping. And they they could see him. There's Jesus sleeping. Let's not wake him up. We'll take care of this ourselves. We're strong. We're experienced fishermen. We've got this one. Let's row to shore. But you know what? Some storms are too much for even the most experienced of fishermen or the experienced of sailors or Marines. There's a lot of stuff out there that you can't handle and I can't handle, but there is one who can. And he loves you. And he knows everything about you. And nothing exists outside of his sovereign control. Maybe you need to move closer. Hunker down in that boat and just nestle up to him. And wake him up and say, not that God's asleep right now. But ask him, Jesus, I'm going through something right now. And I need you because I don't have it. I'm not tough enough. I'm not disciplined enough. I don't have all those things that the world tells me to have. All I'm doing is I'm calling upon you. And I'm putting my faith in you. Because I know that you are bigger than this. And I don't know what the other side of this thing looks like. But I know that you said that you'll be in the front and that you'll be in the back. I want you to think about the fact That the Lord knows you. He knows your situation. And he loves you. And he wants to be on your patrol. He wants to be in the front and he wants to be in the back. He wants point and he wants the rear. The Lord has your 12 and he has your 6. Give it over to him.